Hi everybody, welcome to Hobtech Cars. This was the very first video that was on my channel, but today I'm redoing it and re-editing the audio so that it is of much higher quality. The car that I'm going to talk a little bit about today is my Toyota Celica project that I've acquired. I bought the car around August 2022 and the car is a 2004 Toyota Celica. There's 280,000 kilometers on it and it is a Japanese import SS1 model. The car is a 1ZZ FE powered Celica and there's seven owners on it from new. There are some interesting features on the car because it's a Japanese import. For example, there's no immobilizer on it. It has a genuine TRD spoiler and a genuine TRD bonnet spoiler. And I'll talk a little bit about those more later. It also has genuine HID Xenon headlights, which are exceptionally rare and I'm pretty sure go for big bucks in the US market. The guy that I bought it from had the car for about five years and really the story of the car is that the bodywork is in excellent condition. The car ran fine, but it was out of NCT and hadn't been really driven in about two years. It had essentially been left lying up. And the reason for this is that the catalytic converter on this car had been stolen and cut out of the car along with the oxygen sensor and the wiring loom for that. When I bought the car, it was exceptionally loud to drive and it had a lot of vibrations in the cabin and obviously the engine management light was on the dash. But the car drove fine at the time and I decided to go ahead and buy it. The bonnet spoiler, as I mentioned previously, isn't to my taste. Um, I really don't like it. Some people do and others don't. For me, it's the first thing I wanted to remove when I bought the car. However, I learned that there's eight 10 mil bolts holding it in place and the person who installed it drilled it through the bonnet. So I am stuck with it unless I want to buy a new bonnet or repair and respray my bonnet. So for the moment, it's going to stay put. Other notable things about the car include its leather interior, which is non-original and was added by a previous owner. The original Japanese import SS1 should come with red and black cloth seats, but I do like this leather upgrade and I'm happy to keep it. The car also has an aftermarket radio and I'm a stickler for originality, so perhaps in the future I might swap back to an original Toyota head unit. The alloy wheels on this car are brand new. They're a Japanese brand called Leonis and they're a nice 17 inch wheel. Uh, they're literally brand new wheels and the previous owner put them on the car. I would like something a bit more OEM, original, factory style, but uh, I'll be sticking with these for the moment. I suppose there are a few negatives about this car. I already mentioned about the O2 sensor and the catalytic converter being missing. But other than that, another disadvantage is that being an SS1 Japanese import, this car has drum brakes at the back, which is kind of hilarious that Toyota would market a sports car in 2004 and not put brake discs at the rear. Another thing about this car that is a little bit annoying is that it has non-digital climate control. So it's just the old fashioned uh, sliders, buttons and dials. But a positive about this car is that being a Jap import, it is the full 143 horsepower 1ZZ, which is a slightly higher horsepower than the US or UK market. Another positive is that the car did have working air conditioning after nearly 19 years of driving. Okay, so at this point in the video, the images that you're seeing here is how the car looked when I brought it home and it was sitting in my driveway on that first day. I hadn't touched anything on it yet. This is exactly how it came home to me. So the first thing I did with the car was just a major cleaning. I used Auto Glim Leather Care and Leather Cleaner to bring up the door cards, the seats, and to clean off the, the dash, the center console, and the steering wheel. One thing that you may have noticed from the pictures that I've shown is that the car was unfortunately covered in a lot of fake shark fins and aerodynamic fins. These were on the front bumper, the roof and the rear of the car. So removing these was a priority. They were removed using a hairdryer to heat up the glue and then just a little bit of petrol to remove all of that gluey residue that was left behind. Next, I removed all the decals on the car. These were on the front bumper, the windows and the rear trunk. Next, I replaced the gear knob with a really nice OEM original one that the car would have come with from the factory. The gear knob that came with the car when I bought it was very tatty and worn and it was a cheap aftermarket version. This car only came with one key, so my first priority was to get a second key cut for this car. As I mentioned, there was no oxygen sensor or catalytic converter in this car, but my good friend, 
gave me an O2 sensor out of a VVT LI Celica, which is interchangeable with this one ZZ engine. So that was the O2 sensor sorted. I wired it in. There's four wires on the sensor loom and there are a few wiring diagrams available online. And once I wired in the sensor, the engine management light disappeared instantly. So this was really good news because it meant that the engine management light on the car was related to that O2 sensor and there was nothing else uh, untoward or worrying uh, on the car itself. At this stage, I knew I was onto a winner, so I went to an exhaust expert and they put a catalytic converter into the car for me. I know I could have gone with a cheaper generic version that I bought online and saved a few hundred euro, but the company I went with, I trust and I knew it would be up to the standard to pass the NCT emissions test. So this is the way I decided to do it. So with the catalytic converter in the car, the engine now runs really quietly and probably it's a little bit too quiet for a two-door sports coupe, but it's really nice to have no more rattling in the cabin and popping flames with gear changes. It was at this point that I noticed the car came with 30 mil Cobra lowering springs, so that gives the car its nice stance. I wasn't sure if the car was lowered when I bought it, so this was a thumbs up. A pet hate of mine are pollen filters and cabin filters on cars because no one ever seems to change them. I don't think this one was ever changed in its life and you can see the difference between the before and after. Uh, it's a night and day difference. I mentioned earlier in the video that the headlights are HID Xenon headlights and they're extremely rare and extremely valuable. I mean, they're worth nearly as much as the car itself. However, when I bought the car, they were quite faded with degradation. So I purchased an Auto Glim headlight restoration kit from Halfords and it really did the job for me. It's quite daunting to take a sander to your car's headlights, but the difference was night and day and the end result is absolutely fantastic. The next thing I did was I repainted the calipers on the car. I used Hammerite red metal paint. I've used it on a few cars. It'll last forever and it just really cleans up the brakes on the car. At this point, I gave a full inspection of the car and there was a risk that there might be rust under there, but thankfully there's nothing at all, just a few spots of surface rust. The sills and subframe are perfect and very much intact with no rust damage. There was some very small little superficial rust spots in the boot, so I did take my Rust-Oleum, uh, painted it onto the sanded surface uh, just to kind of stop that rust from growing. It's more a preventative treatment step. So that is where the car stands at the moment. It's come on a lot. It looks really, really good. And the bodywork is nine out of 10 on this car. And I think it has the potential to be a 10 out of 10 car. The next things for this car are to get it NCT'd. Then I want to focus on the paintwork of the car, do a clay bar, remove contaminants in the paintwork, and then T cut the car and wax it. Also, the plastic boot trim is horrendous. I don't know who or what, repainted this previously in the car's life, but it needed a lot of attention. So I will sand that back and have it up nice and neat. In summary, the car is well on its way to being restored and I hope you'll join me on my journey with this car. If you did like the video, please do like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.